subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 7th of September. India prepares for the worst ahead of possible third wave of COVID-19. Taliban fire shots to disperse crowds at anti-Pakistan protest in Kabul. And Sri Lankan Parliament approves emergency regulations to contain food prices. And now for all the details. Hospital authorities have said they are prepared for the worst as India braces for another possible surge in COVID-19 infections during the upcoming festival season. India has nationwide added many more hospital beds in the past few months and imported more than 100 oxygen carriers to raise the total to about 1,250. As India braces for another possible surge in COVID-19 infections around its September to November festival season, hospital authorities have expressed they are prepared for the worst. Officials of New Delhi's premier Sir Gangaram Hospital said they are raising the hospital's oxygen storage capacity by 50%, learning from bitter experiences during the second COVID wave when hospitals across the Indian capital ran short of oxygen. Nationally, India has added many more hospital beds in the past few months and imported more than 100 oxygen carriers to raise the total to about 1,250. As of Tuesday, the COVID-19 cases tally in India has stood at 33.05 million with 441,042 deaths. The country's health minister, Mansukh Mandavia, on Tuesday informed India has reached another milestone by administering over 700 million vaccine doses so far. Oh no, we are totally ready for to face third wave. If it comes to the extent, let us say, our second wave, even with little more than that. We are totally... Our man force is totally uh, experienced, our physical structure is totally available, all but we require oxygen and I told you that uh, as far as my judgment is concerned, liquid medical oxygen will be in adequate supply. Meanwhile, India's Kerala is on high alert after the death of a 12-year-old boy due to the deadly brain-damaging Nipah virus, which has resurfaced amid concerns over a rapid surge in coronavirus cases in the southern state in recent weeks. Kerala's Health Minister Veena George said authorities have identified and isolated 251 people who came in contact with the victim. In news from Afghanistan, Hundreds of Kabul residents came out on the streets on Tuesday to protest against the Taliban and what they called interference in Afghanistan's affairs by neighboring Pakistan. Taliban fired shots into the air to disperse the crowds at the protest that came as Pakistan's spy chief Lieutenant General Faiz Hamid flew into Kabul last week. He is believed to be working with the Taliban and laying the groundwork for a new government in the country. Washington has accused Pakistan and its spy agency ISI of backing the Taliban in the group's two decades fight against the US-backed government in Kabul, although Islamabad has denied the charges. Taliban gunmen fired in the air to disperse anti-Pakistan protesters in Kabul on Tuesday, witnesses said. Scores of people were seen running for cover as volleys of gunfire could be heard. There were no immediate reports of injuries till the last reports came in. Hundreds of men and women took to streets shouting slogans such as Long Live the Resistance in support of National Resistance Front of Afghanistan led by Ahmad Masood and Death to Pakistan against the Taliban and what they called interference in Afghanistan's affairs by neighboring Pakistan. Pakistan's spy chief Lieutenant General Faiz Hamid flew into Kabul last Saturday. It was not clear what his agenda was but he is believed to be working with the Taliban and laying the groundwork for a new government in the country.
چی مار چیزان وقت امروز خاموش نشینه پاکستان چی که داخل کشور ما میایه کشور ما رو بمبارد میکنه نه پاکستان حق داره نه طالب نه گروه القاعده Ahmed Masood, in an audio message posted on Facebook earlier, said Pakistan was involved in attacking Afghans in Panjshir as they put up a fight against the Taliban since they took over Kabul on August 15. <laughs> Washington has accused Pakistan and its spy agency, the Inter Services Intelligence (ISI) of backing the Taliban in the group's two-decade fight against the U.S.-backed government in Kabul. Although Islamabad has denied the charges. Meanwhile, Taliban is yet to announce a government, but reports have surfaced that Taliban leader Mullah Mohammad Hassan Akhund, who is in the United Nations terror watch list, will be the next head of state. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan has hailed the Taliban's desire to have Afghanistan incorporated in the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor as encouraging. Pakistan's Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmad said, it is good if the Taliban's views about China were similar to that of Pakistan. Pakistan's Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmed on Monday hailed the Taliban's desire to have Afghanistan incorporated in the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, or CPEC, as encouraging, saying it is good if the Taliban's views about China were similar to that of Pakistan. The minister made the remarks in response to a query from a journalist who quoted the Taliban spokesperson as expressing desire and reportedly pressing for Afghanistan's inclusion in the CPEC. The Taliban had on Saturday also described China as its most important partner, saying Afghanistan looks to Beijing to rebuild the country as it faces an economic collapse. This <laughs> और सीपैक पाकिस्तान की मार्शी शारग है और पाकिस्तान को चीन की दोस्ती पे फखर और नाज है हमारी दोस्ती चीन के साथ हमालिया से बुलंद है अगर तालिबान भी यही सोच रखते हैं तो और अच्छी बात है बीजिंग अनाउंस द सीपैक प्रोजेक्ट इन 2015 aiming to expand its influence in Pakistan and across Central and South Asia. At present, the economic corridor reaches out from China's Xinjiang region to Balochistan's Gwadar port. Activists have, however, long blamed that CPEC has only brought death and destruction for indigenous people instead of economic opportunities, and accuse that Pakistani forces operate with impunity in the region to ensure safe passage to China. Moving on, lawyers in Gilgit Baltistan have raised concern over the delay by the government to fill the vacant positions of judges in the illegally occupied region, which they said has been affecting the whole legal system. They have extended boycott of all court proceedings until September 15 to pressurize the government to address the issues. Lawyers in Gilgit Baltistan have continued to protest against delay in filling the vacant position of judges in the illegally occupied region, which has been creating problems in the judicial process. Members of a lawyers' association during a press conference recently blamed that the government has turned a blind eye towards people crying for justice in the region. They claim the legal system itself has been paralyzed due to irregular appointments and rampant corruption. Six judges are not there. The requirements are posted, there is everything, and there are people who need to be there. They are supposed to be there, but नहीं है इसका मतलब है उन उस जहां जहां ये छह जजेस नहीं है वहां वहां के लोगों को इंसाफ के फरामी में मुश्किलात हैं दूर दराज इलाके हैं the lawyers bodies in the latest have extended the boycott of court's proceedings till September 15 against the delay in filling of the vacant judiciary posts. Earlier, they had halted all court proceedings from August 16 to September 1 to keep up the pressure. They have also demanded the government to appoint lawyers as legal advisors on the 24 vacant posts in various departments.
In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's parliament on Monday approved a state of emergency declared by President Gotabaya Rajpaksa on August 30 to contain soaring inflation after a steep fall in the value of the country's currency caused by spike in food prices. The proposal to impose emergency regulations was approved by a majority of 81 votes. The constitution requires that it be approved within 14 days by the 225 member parliament where the governing party has more than 150 seats. Under the regulations, the authorized officers will be able to take steps to provide essential food items at concessionary rate to the public by purchasing stocks of essential food items including paddy, rice and sugar at government guaranteed prices or based on the customs value on imported goods to prevent market irregularities. The island nation is witnessing a surge in COVID-19 cases and deaths, which has hit tourism, one of its main foreign currency earners. The country is currently in a curfew till next week because of the spike in COVID-19 cases. Travel operators in India, Jammu and Kashmir volunteered to clean the famous Dal Lake in Srinagar city on Monday in a bid to make it a pleasant site for the tourist in the valley and preserve water bodies. Named as the jewel in the crown of Kashmir, Dal Lake is a key attraction for tourists and houseboats of the lake contributes to tourism sector of the region. Dal Lake in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory is a famous tourist attraction, with tourists from different parts of the country and the world thronging the lake every year to enjoy rides in the famed houseboats of the lake and unwind. Travel operators in cooperation with Tourism Department volunteered to clean the famous Dal Lake in Srinagar city on Monday in a bid to make it a pleasant site for the tourists in the valley and preserve the water bodies. Organizers said the cleaning drive was held to ensure environment-friendly tourism and protect people from infections and foul smells emerging from the lake. Participants used local boats and nets to collect the waste, including plastic bottles, polythene, disposable items and other waste. The tourists who are around the surrounding area, they come to the garden and come to the garden. Nehru Park. Nehru Park. Nehru Park. So, that's why we have organized this here. We have to clear the message of surroundings here. So, that you can keep the surroundings as much as you can keep the surroundings here. Especially in our Dal Lake, which is our Dal Lake. इसको क्लीन रखने क्योंकि ये जो हमारी आईडेंटी है ये डाल ले बहुत सारी स्पेशीज हैं फिशेस की बहुत सारी मतलब इसमें से हम वेजिटेबल्स कमाते हैं वो जो ये प्लास्टिक या बाकी गार्बेज जो है ये इसको गंदा कर देता है ये मछलियों के लिए जो बाकी इसमें कीड़े मकोड़े हैं हाइड्रोफाइट से उनके लिए भी जहरीला है इसलिए मतलब ये हमने एक इनिशिएटिव लिया है देख लीजिए हम तो एक दिन का कर रहे हैं हम तो सोच रहे हैं कि हर महीने ये दो दो तीन तीन दिन का रहना चाहिए यहाँ डल लेक आल्सो एक्स एस एन इम्पोर्टेंट सोर्स फॉर कमर्शियल ऑपरेशंस इन फिशिंग एंड वाटर प्लांट हार्वेस्टिंग Over the years, the Dal Lake has deteriorated considerably as thousands of tons of sewage spew into it, feeding weeds and choking the lake and its aquatic life of oxygen. Thousands of Sikhs thronged India's northern Amritsar city to celebrate the 417th anniversary of the installation of the holy book Guru Granth Sahib at the famous Golden Temple. They took out a colourful procession in the city and offered prayers at the Holy Shrine to mark the occasion. Thousands of Sikh devotees on Tuesday thronged Amritsar city in India's northern Punjab state to celebrate the anniversary of the installation of the holy book Sri Guru Granth Sahib at the famous Golden Temple Shrine amid the pandemic. On the occasion called Prakash Parv, devotees carried the holy book in a palanquin from Gurdwara Ramsar in the city to the Golden Temple in a colourful religious procession. The massive project to compile Guru Granth Sahib, which has hymns from some of the ten Sikh Gurus, was undertaken by the fifth Guru of the Sikhs, Guru Arjan Dev. The text is regarded by the Sikhs as the living embodiment of their ten leaders and is pivotal in worship and Sikhism. <laughs> Every year, the entire Sikh community celebrates the anniversary with great fanfare and fervor. 
majority of India's Sikh population, which forms 2% of the more than 1 billion population, resides in northern India, particularly in the state of Punjab and in national capital, New Delhi. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.